Hi there, everyone. Uh, happy Sunday night. And isn't this fun? Just a fun little filter. I haven't done a filter in a while, so I thought I'd do one. Um, I'm Dr. Beth Westy, and I wanted to talk about carbs and thyroid issues tonight. Really, really important thing. And I've chatted with a few women lately. Thyroid seems to be a reoccurring um, you know, issue, and that's why the next challenge group I'm doing is focused on thyroid issues, adrenal issues, and overall hormones. Really targeting those things for women, changing your nutrition to match that. This is all in honor of my upcoming book, The Female Fat Solution. And um, in case you missed some of the other videos I've done, you can go back and watch them, or go back and watch the new segment I did on WCCO last week. Uh, fantastic stuff. So, um, if you find this information helpful, you can click the share button. That way more people can get this information. Because a lot of people, a lot of ladies get targeted and get information on thyroid issues or other hormone issues. And it's just not, it's not accurate for them. So they're following the wrong information to get them the right result. So when we talk, oh, hi Paige! <laughs> um... When we talk about thyroid issues, one thing that is a very big trend for women with thyroid issues, and this is not necessarily somebody who's on a thyroid medication or something like that, a lot of times women get um, what we call sluggish thyroid. You have symptoms of having a thyroid issue, but you're within normal limits. Oh, maybe I'm on the low end of normal, or maybe it's a little off, but not enough to do anything about it, or you have issues, and a lot of times that's coupled with other hormone issues of some kind and other digestive issues. That's a huge piece too. There's other um, intestinal problems, whether it be upset stomach or bloating or you know something wrong with your digestive system too. That seems to be a common pair there. So if this is you, this is gonna be really helpful in terms of really focusing on getting you the right result. Yay! So when we talk about thyroid and carbs, a lot of times women have tried to cut specific things out of their diet and we'll try like no carbs, like eating zero carbs for a period of time and say, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to do all these things. Yay. I'm going to cut out carbs. Yay. Okay. And for a period of time, you might notice a result, but overall it's not something that you can sustain because then any time you introduce any type of carbohydrate, any sugar, anything into your system, your body will just hold on to it and tuck it away and just keep it forever and ever and ever. And the next time you have any little carb, it does, ooh, what a nice buddy for you. I'm gonna keep you here too, ooh. And that just builds and grows from there. And then how do you really target it and how do you really work with that? Carb cycling is a great way where you're introducing carbs into your system, your body's learning how to burn them, they're not getting stored, and it increases your metabolism. And my favorite thing about it is you get to eat carbs. Who's not, who's gonna be mad about that, right? So a lot of times, side note, when I do start people off on doing carb cycling and they're, the meal plan and everything that I have for women, it does take you through this. So you don't have to count. You don't have to worry about it. It just, as long as you're following the, the program, you're doing it. It's so easy then to get taken through a carb cycle. But I do talk about being gluten-free while you're doing this. Purpose of this is that gluten's inflammatory for your body. And if you're going to be focusing on thyroid issues and decreasing, and decreasing any digestive issues, going gluten-free, at least for a period of time, can really, really help boost the effects of this. So it's going to be easier on your thyroid. Gluten is also really irritating for the thyroid, um, along with some other, you know, foods. But gluten specifically can really irritate thyroid issues. So cutting that out while you're working on boosting your thyroid and working on carb cycling is a great way to do that. So carb cycling then is really also easy to do nowadays because there's so many gluten-free items. You may be concerned about, oh, sugar or other things in processed um, carbs. But a lot of times the, the what I recommend is, yes, it's still okay to have a piece of bread or something now and then because... <laughs> It's life, right? <laughs> you're not going to just not eat stuff all the time. But as long as you're choosing something gluten-free, you're not having that extra inflammation in your body. So the gals that I worked with that have done, done the program and gone gluten-free and have not done them before, amazing results because of the effect it has on your system when you're going gluten-free and going through this carb cycle. So going gluten-free for the carb cycle and then focusing on hitting those carb numbers throughout the day. I do have them spaced throughout the day because sometimes you're eating a lot of carb and it's tough to get to that amount by the end of the day if you're not spacing it out. 
So here's the example of, of a five day carb cycle. This is just days one through five. 200 grams, 150, 100 grams, 50, and then 125. So 125 is a normal amount. These are all grams of carb for the day. So this is a high carb days here, and then you're dropping it down to a really low carb day, and then ending on a normal level here. Now again, you can use many different times of um, many different types of carbohydrates. Uh, fruit is also a carbohydrate, and any grains, things like that, but again, focusing on a gluten-free source is gonna be really, really important to get the right result here. Oh, Casey said you're having trouble with the video playing, right? Oh, I don't know why. Um, well, I, I, there, there will be a replay. <laughs> Um, so this is this is a carb cycle. So a couple of things about the thyroid then and how carb cycling plays into thyroid issues. So especially when women have decreased carbs in your diet, you know, again, I threw out the example of maybe having other digestive issues there too, um, going gluten-free, going through the carb cycle there, that's going to teach your body to burn carbohydrates. But when you have a thyroid issue, one of the caveats here is that it's not going to work probably the first time around you do this. So with thyroid issues, your metabolism is a lot slower, it's sluggish, and it's not just picking up like other things normally do. So when you're going through this carb cycle, you're eating a lot of carb here for a couple of days, and all of a sudden your body's like, whoa, 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 what do you think you're doing? This is crazy, craziness right now. Um, What am I supposed to do with all this? And it's so used to storing all those carbs, oftentimes you feel like you're going in the wrong direction when you start something like this. Trust the process. Trust that it's going to turn your thyroid on by keep going through this. Again, your thyroid has not um, had enough you know, fuel. Your thyroid is mainly controlled by a negative feedback loop from your brain, and your brain runs on carbohydrates. So oftentimes when people are limiting carbs, you're really limiting how well your body can process everything because it runs on carbs. Um, oh, good. So... I just missed your name. Sandy said you're very interested in this. That's awesome, Sandy. So carb cycling, going through different days, different amounts of carbs. Again, I recommend doing this gluten-free so that you don't have the inflammation in your system and you're not irritating the thyroid at the same time so your thyroid can work better. I also like to pair this with a, a supplement, um, some, uh, an adaptogen. Specifically, I like a blend, right? I take a blend of adaptogens, more than one. I, they're all kind of grouped together and it's just wonderful because I'm targeting different things at once. But the adaptogen I really like for thyroid is called ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. I'm writing this really sloppy. N-D-H-A. Ashwagandha. There. That is one of my favorite adaptogens and also is really... Uh, helpful for the thyroid specifically. So adding, going through this, do, doing ashwagandha, making sure you're doing it gluten-free, you're going to be really helping your thyroid out a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Again, it's not going to happen as quick for you if, you ha if you're having thyroid issues or sluggish thyroid because the thyroid takes a little bit to wake up. It might take a few rounds of this to really figure out kind of what's going on and then what to do about it. So that's the other thing too, timing wise, it's gonna be different for you. A lot of times I talk about women with hormone issues or th other things going on in their body. And, <laughs> and the, the analogy I like to use is, you know, everybody else is at the race and they're at the starting line and they're all starting here and you're, you're still in the parking lot looking for a parking space. You know, it's when you got a thyroid issue, everybody else is over here and you're like, way back over here. I can't even figure out where I'm supposed to park, let alone get there to be at the same pace as everybody else. So have patience with your body. Your body just, it has to even catch up to the same level so that you can get those results. The body has to be at a healthy enough place for you to see changes happen in a positive manner. Otherwise, when you start to make changes, it's going to have a negative effect. So that's the other part there too, to kind of, you know, go about it. And it's a different sort of philosophy. Um, I'm a really big believer in working with the body, natural body physiology, how the body functions, and really getting the best results from there once you get the body healthy enough. So, whew, that's what I have for you guys tonight. Um, <laughs> carb cycling, thyroid, they 
blended together beautifully. And then again, adding in a, a adding in that adaptogen really helps the thyroid kind of get started again, especially after it's been unhappy for a while. So, all right, if you guys again have questions, comment below, you can message me. Um, and if there's something that you're not sure about, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, if you are interested in jumping on board with our next group, click the link and come get started with us and I will chat with you guys later.